This video will go through this welding table, which was built back in 2013. It starts with the top. It's removable. It's one inch thick stainless steel. It's patterned with modular holes for the friction clamps. And then some large oval holes mixed around the center will handle C-clamps. This works together with the top side overhang, giving a welder several different options. Frame below is all aluminum. It's welded. The upper beams are solid and square tubing everywhere else. It has an elevation system. It's independent. It gets its power from a cordless drill. It turns reduction gear and then chains, sprockets, and screw shafts do the rest. It can elevate this table full up and down on one battery. That's 26 to 40 inches. And that's not too light either. This thing weighs a little over 1,500 pounds. Cool thing is, it'll maintain zero degrees, whether it's stopped or elevating, and doesn't need any lock pins or bolts to keep it there. It has a wheel system. It has four casters. They fold up together, which allows the table down to its lowest height. This low height works with the frame opening to provide roll stool usage. A welder's knees can enter underneath, giving a desk-like feeling and total arm support. For storage, it has two open drawers. They hide the wheels, they ride on some bearing sliders, and they can be locked in the side lever. So this video will go through the build step by step. It'll cover everything from the tabletop, into the frame, the legs, and all the stuff in between. These areas are separated into a video time index, which you can see here. This way you can skip around. Table started with a lot of drawings. Here's one of the final few for the top. Next step was to have the stainless plate cut with CNC water jet. They did a great job. And then from there a torch was used to get out some highs and lows and try and get it within ten thousandths or so. For the mounting bolts, top spin machine with an end mill. This will countersink the Allen heads. They've been turned to fit. There's 26 of them and you can see them here in place. Frame is built from aluminum to avoid painting, rusting, and it helped keep the weight down. The upper beams were cut first. They're solid. They've been drilled to match the table. And then the ends were machined for the idler sprockets. This area will weld onto the corner posts, which are being cut here. They're square tube with a half inch wall. And two of them were milled for the height charts. That way the numbers can be stamped in. Front beam was cut for the knee clearance. Here it is on the bandsaw. And then the tabletop got its first job, and that's the assembly of the frame. These are the lower beams. They're quarter wall square tube. Took a lot of welding, MIG and TIG, a lot of heat, but everything came out pretty good. And the last thing to do was just a final sand. Elevation system started with a lot of trial and error. It begins here with the hexagon cut input drive shaft. It's stainless. It sits in the front beam. Has a grease zerk. It allows you to grease the two bearings, which are pressed in the beam. And on the inside, love joy U joints weld to a solid drive shaft and turn the hub city gear. It's a low profile oil bath unit. It's held in place with this stainless bracket. Above that, the idler arms mount. They'll hold the needle bearing sprockets. Then for adjustment, you can reach up under the table with your hand or use a wrench to fine tune or tighten in place. Chain guides were built with some solid square brass. They've been machined so the chain can stand vertical. They're height adjustable and they bolt to the beams. Dust shields were made from aluminum, also height adjustable. They keep out debris, hide the chain, and then lead into the post idler brackets. They're built from stainless. The noses fit into the beams for strength. Then stub shafts weld on top. They'll hold the sprockets, which are being bored out here for the needle bearings. For the screw shafts, they're driven with this sprocket. They first start with a piece of threaded rod with a nut welded on. That's then turned back down. Keyway was cut. And then that assembly will rotate inside the driven nuts, which go inside the legs. They're built from stainless. They've got one inch pads welded at the bottom. They hold the S and W leveling mounts. And two of them hold the stops. They go up the side of the legs. They point at the table's height. 
They're adjustable and prevent lift off by stopping two legs at the same time. On the outside, each post has a grease zerk. It'll feed all three needle bearings for the shaft. Below that, access holes were cut, step milled. This way you can grease the shafts full top to full bottom. And with a Lexan in place, they become sight glass. And the last step was to blast and paint the steel parts with a couple of coats of Emron. So this table's got 14 sprockets, Browning and Martin, 14 brass caps, 36 needle bearings made by INA, and stainless chain made by Pier. Wheels start in the front with some nice big axles. They're solid aluminum, they're two inches, and they're being machined here to align the caster pads. Those pieces are then welded together and ready for the ER Wagner casters. And then that assembly will sit in these two beams between the frame rails. Once installed, a stop pad holds everything in when the wheels go airborne. And then twin stainless connector plates bring the signal in from the bell crank. Together they reverse the throw so the wheels fold into each other. Then for suspension, it'll tilt two degrees and you can see it working with the dial indicator. Rear axle is built the same, just wider. It sits in some side plates that have been machined. They weld to the frame rails, and then when the wheels go airborne, the stop pads hold it there. This handle folds the wheels. It's welded to a shaft that comes through the frame rail. It attaches to a bunch of linkage. It's one inch solid rod. It's all stainless. It uses rod ends, bronze bushings, and held in place with detent balls. Drawers make it nice so you can have storage right on the table. We'll start with the slider brackets. They're built from stainless. They hold the headache bearing sliders, good for 500 pounds a pair. They mount here in the brackets, which bolt to the frame rails. Drawer fronts are two piece. They've been fully welded. Bottoms were cut out for a small wheel tub. The sides were then welded on and everything was filed, sanded, and polished back off. To lock these drawers, a control handle is welded to a shaft that rotates the cams that are being cut here. Pens were then welded on. They engage to the catches that mount to the drawers and then a final stamping for the frame rails. Using the table has been nice. I can't say enough about a modular table. We'll start at this end. It's got two ground tabs. They're tucked up in there where you won't hit your leg as easy. Then for storage, you got the blocks and shims over here. And then on the other side, you got friction post clamps, ground extension cable. You can use those clamps all over the place, even on small parts. And then on a medium job, you'll use the blocks, the tall clamps. And then for big jobs, I like this part. You can jack them up and then pull the table out from under it. And then for height matching, it works good. It'll go higher than most benches. Height matching stands or saw horses. And you can even height match to the thousands. Well, I guess that about covers everything. We'll finish up with the speedy shots, and thanks for watching.